This video has been sponsored by Solder Stick. More on that at the end. Hey, what's happening, guys? Well, if everything went well, I've had my surgery and am now recovering. So I recorded this over the weekend before my surgery. I'm still playing around here with my AnyCubic Cobra Neo, and I'm having a blast with it. Currently, I am printing a streaming test, and I'll show you more about that later. But I have uh, been able to actually print some things now that are kind of cool, and am in the process of tuning this all up. So you guys have already seen some of the stuff I printed before, you know, the Benchy, the little vise, the uh, the actual screw and nut. So what I've been concentrating on now that I've got that out of my system is tweaking and, and setting everything up. So like I printed out these little 20 millimeter cubes and I'm just trying to make various adjustments so that it looks as nice and as smooth as possible and that involves changing a lot of things the speed at which the filament is extruded the speed at which the head travels the heat at which the filament is mounted the heat to the bed there, there are just many many variables so I've been tweaking and tweaking like here here's another one you can see big difference there on those Y corners right there see that I just had my first major problem with the printer it decided it didn't know the level of the Z axis anymore and crashed into the bed hopefully I got it straightened out that took about 45 minutes so we were talking about the adjustments I was making just trying to get the cube to print as best as possible. This is another one I did in a different PLA. This one really looks good. So then I started with the uh, the stringing things. See how they look? Got like some strings hanging between there. There's settings for that, and the retract settings is one of them. So this is uh, 190 degrees, one millimeter retract, retract 25 millimeters per second. And that's pretty good. So I made a change to see if it would do any better. 190 degrees, 1 millimeter, 40 uh, meters per second retract. And see how much worse that is? This is what you got to do with the 3D printing. So then we went... I thought I wrote that down. This is the retract test. And again, I don't know how well you can see this. Let's zoom in. So there's one millimeter of retract, two millimeter, three millimeter, four millimeter, five millimeter. And the retract is at the end where it is actually squirting out the liquid plastic. When it needs to move somewhere else or change direction, it'll pick it up just a little bit and then put it back out. And if you don't have those settings just right, you end up getting the strings. Now see, I forgot I marked these two. 190, two degrees, one millimeter retract. This is 40 40 uh, millimeters per second on the retract. This one is not marked. But, I, you know, we, we hold them up here and we just look at the difference. We change only one thing at a time and we say, what was better? Well, this one is better. You can see on this one we have the beginnings, what would be some string. This is much better. Look at the smooth sides. We look at the bottom. Next bottom, uh, is that right on it? Why can't I? Oh, there's the bottom. Let's see, I can't find it on the bottom on this one. Yeah. So then I tried to do, uh, draw out a uh, a case for a Raspberry Pi. It's kind of okay, but the settings are bad, and it's got a little rail on it. Yeah, we're getting there. But, didn't really want to tell you about all, well, I guess I did really want to tell you about all the little, little tweaks I've been doing, because that's what 3D printing is about, tweaking everything 
until you get it right. But what I wanted to show with you today and share with you is somebody had mentioned Octoprint to me. So what is Octoprint? Well first, once you have your 3D file, it has to be sliced into individual layers that the 3D printer can print. So you need a program called a slicer. This is Cura. It's one of many. So you bring your item in, you put it on there, you set all your settings, and then you tell it to slice it, and it sends it out, and it wants to send it to a micro SD card, or if your printer is directly connected via a USB cable, you can send it out that way. What Octoprint does is it's basically like sort of a, a print server, and it is running on a Raspberry Pi. So a test print after my crash, you can see I was trying to print out a fillet gauge when it crashed the first time. But hopefully, yes, it's printing okay. Anyway, what we're coming over here to show you is my second Raspberry Pi case I printed, which is very nice, and mounted on the back of this thing here. And it is running Octoprint, and it has two cables that come out of it. One is a USB-C cable that controls the printer itself. This uh, control panel now, we're not even really using it. And then there's another cable that comes to this webcam. And if you've ever watched the 3D YouTubers, they always have a super quick little um, time lapse. It looks something like this. Pardon me for not setting up a capture. I'm having some audio difficulty with it at the moment, so you have to look at the camera. So we are on the temperature screen of Octoprint. And you can see we have a target temperature of 192. We're at 193.7. Looks like we're getting ready to print. Let's go over to uh, control here. You can actually see the camera. Things are moving. Let's see what happens. Hopefully it doesn't crash. I had a little crash trouble with Octoprint before. Nope, I think we're good. Yeah, I think we'll be good. It's cleaning its cleaning its schnozzle right now. Yeah, very good. Alright, so let's go back to Octoprint on Octopi. So you can see now we are connected. It is printing. This one's printing is called Big Fairy user and the time lapse is running on uh, the change of Z. Print time. It's guessing it's, I think it's gonna be about an hour for this. And you see we have controls over here as well. We can move our X, Y, and Z axes. We can extrude or retract filament. We can turn our motors on and off. We can turn our fans on and off. We can even mess around and control some things here in the firmware, but I don't know much about this yet, so we're not going to mess with it. Also, there is a G-code viewer here, so you can actually see what it is doing. That's pretty cool, isn't it? It's actually showing you the lines as they're printing them. So that's an infill. Actually, actually, that's probably the first. Yeah, that's probably the first layer going down. There's a move, and now it's printing. If you wanted to see the actual G, uh, G code, you can come over here and see it. These are our time lapse controls. Completed time lapses are stored down here. But what it's doing is uh, at a minimum of every 15 seconds, it's checking for a change of the z-axis. And if so, it takes a picture, and then it puts them all together at the end, which is just very cool. So, like I said, this is running on a Raspberry Pi, which allows me to control that printer all the way, like, seven feet over there, which is really unnecessary. In my case, it's fun to play with, though. 
but let's say you designed uh, in an office somewhere and your printers were you know in a in a printer room you know so it's quiet this is what you would want um, you can access your uh, octoprint octopi what's that called octoprint from your phone tablet computer you can even run it on a computer doesn't matter so I forget who suggested I give a look into octopi octoprint but I have and it is super cool so here's my last print off the printer and it's going to help with some design work I'm doing this is just a simple radius gauge in millimeters you know when you find something that fits the proper radius see there's light coming through there no uh, 10 11 Yep, so about 11 millimeters is the radius of that finger. Very cool. I've printed out a bunch of these fidget cubes. They print in place with the hinges built in, and then all you have to do is snap them. Uh, I gave one to my son, I gave one to his girlfriend, and I gave one to my aunt in the nursing home who seems to enjoy playing with them as well. This is the first one I did in this scale, and you can see it's a little... Hmm. it's a little rough but it's working great and then this was my last no that was not my last cube where was my last cube this was the one I printed after the crash I didn't have my Z set right so actually had no bottom on it whatsoever what did I do with my good cube I don't know it doesn't matter I've got the printer working it's dialed in and uh, hopefully next week here maybe even Friday of this week be back with some uh, some more electronic style videos. Hopefully, I'm healed up by then. All right, guys. If you enjoyed this, and I hope you did, please give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. If you're not yet a member of the Patreon, check it out for a dollar a month. It really helps out keep the channel going. And uh, next up is going to be a little video from our sponsor, at Solder Stick. Check them out. Just see what they have, and uh, you know if they have anything that fits your needs give them a shot give them a try see what you think yeah here's my last cube very nice all right guys that's it i'm out peace today's video is brought to you by solder stick solder stick makes quick waterproof wire connections that last a long time and protect whatever it is you're working on they sell different types of connectors, everything from T-tap connectors, which allow you to put a splice into the middle of a wire without having to cut the wire or remove any insulation, waterproof uh, melt butt connector kits, Spade connector kits, which if you work on cars or boats, you know how useful they will be. And the same goes for ring connectors. When you need to connect a wire to something with a nut and a bolt, this is simply the way to do it. Solder stick. Remember them for all of your wire connection needs. There's a link down below for a discount.